Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to today's update. We're two weeks away from the last update. Today, um, we'll be going over Sunset Vibes by G13 Labs, Banana Blaze by Dutch Passion, Charlotte's Angel CBD, and Power Plant Auto. These are all auto flowers, by the way. So in case anybody's wondering, um, Sunset Vibes is 19 days old today, and Banana Blaze is 35 days old today. CBD Charlotte's Angel is 91 days today. Today it gets to chop. It's been two weeks flushing, and it's done. And the Banana Blaze that's on the left in the front needs to to get over and start to get into the bloom nutrients and the power plant auto is also 91 days today and it's about three foot in diameter by 32 inches tall that's how how big it is right now and i think that um it's mostly stopped stretching and I think it's just kind of going into flower mode. Okay, let's get into the younger ones. We'll look over them. Here's Banana Blaze. Auto. But that's Passion. This one here is doing pretty good. You can see it's already starting to butt up. Let's get in there. Yay. So, definitely I'm... Um, I need to get it switched out of this tote, which is right now it has grow nutrients just for grow the veg, and uh, it's going in the flower. So I'm going to switch it up into the bloom section now. So we're going to hook it up with some bloom nutrients today, and I'm also bumping up the nutrients to about one milliliter per liter. Let's get back in here. And here is Sunset Vibes. Sunset Vibes is growing a little, a little less vigorous, but she's nice and healthy. She's still in veg mode, and uh, she's about due for another filming. I did, I did film it once. You can totally tell. There's the after effect of the first film. You could see in the fan leaf. So yeah, there's that one there. And there's Banana Blaze. Banana Blaze is uh, 35 days. And the one in the uh, Sunset Vibes is only 19 days. And here is Charlotte's Angel CBD. One thing I could say about the CBD, this one, it's just pretty small plant, but it's all, all bud. So, even with it being pretty small, my average on it will be, I'd say four to five ounces, even though it's a small plant. It's just mainly because this plant's all bud. Get in here a little closer. This is pretty much the end of days for this one. Now, if I wanted, I could probably let it flush another week and keep going, but um, I think it's complete enough now to where. I'm going to have to make the chop. So definitely the banana blaze is like... It's, it's at a crucial stage right now where the bloom nutrients need to start getting pumped onto it. It's just ready for the next the next level. I could totally tell it. It's going up. And uh, definitely with the roots and everything, they're really good. This one here has huge root mass. That one over there, it's 
starting to get one. It's um, definitely just behind this this plant here. Um, so yeah, the CBD that one's done. It's all done skis. And now we're coming over to the power plant. Um, on the last update two weeks ago, I thought that was my last um, defoliation, but it definitely wasn't because last week I just went Edward Scissors hands on the plant again and completely thinned it out like really heavy because I'm trying to get the light down into the core and everything like that. Um, today, during this water change, I do have to do another light defoliation, so I'm thinking this is probably my last defoliation period. It's really just starting to get some pistol sights. So it's just in the beginning stages. Um, I'm going to bump up the nutrients today and give her just a little bit stronger dose than what I've been giving her we'll come down here so I did clean up quite a bit here underneath so the center's been really cleared out on that last this last week here and it just basically teared up to the next level. I just kind of started wiping out a lot of the undergrowth and stuff. Um, with this strain, it's definitely going to keep you busy defoliating. I mean, you constantly have to defoliate this thing. Um, starting the 11th week, it drank about 8 gallons. 12th week, it jumped up to about 17 gallons. And we're coming in to um, this week here. Um, I've added two extra five gallons to the original 10 gallons at the beginning of the nutrient change. So it's definitely drank close to 20 gallons this week alone. Let's see how low it's getting. I'm pretty sure it's, it's low. So it's extremely low. And that's after adding 20 gallons of water this week. So there's probably like maybe a gallon left in there at the most. So she's up to drinking 19 gallons um, right now. And she's just going to continue staying at that level. Like the 10 gallons is low. Like today's Sunday. The 10 gallons is way low by say Wednesday. I have to fill her up. I fill her up with another five gallons. By Friday, she's ready for another another five gallons. So it's just gonna keep going this way until she's done. And um, it's not unusual for plants like this big to drink that much. It's pretty common. Um, to tell you where I'm at on the dosages, I bumped it up to about um, 1.5 milliliters per liters on the base. All the additives are in half. Um, CalMag, it is 1.5 milliliters per liter. And uh, yeah, so I have been only giving it, like so far, for like the last three or four weeks, only one milliliter per liter on the base. And that's with um, advanced nutrients. So their range is between one milliliter to four liters four milliliters on the bottle so um, yeah so that's power plant she is just gorgeous um, as far as I'm concerned and I looked up on the internet nobody else has grown a power plant auto this big so this is one of the biggest power plant autos right now um, ever grown so it's a really nice plant and although one thing is is that it's going to take a long time um, these bigger ones I've seen go up to 130 days so I'm thinking it's going to take all of March probably be done in mid-April I would say 
And it's just, it's got a lot to produce. I mean, it's going to be absolutely filled up with some huge coals here. Um, in about five weeks, it'll look, look pretty, pretty good. And um, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm thinking about doing my photo run and just finishing up what autos I do have in here. Like this set over here, the beginning, the starter set. I'm thinking of just running these out and then I'm gonna do a photo period grow with like three photo periods. I could grow up to three plants in here, full size plants. Um, I would not put any more in here because my plants just tend to get pretty big. I need all the space I can get. I can't cram a whole shitload in here like some people do. It's just, it doesn't work out that way in bubble ponics. It's, it's vigorous growing versus, um, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, so I'll probably do a photo run here coming up. Um, I'm still thinking on it because I did accidentally get the alien mutant mass from Critical Mass Collective Seeds, and those are photo periods. I still want to grow them, and it's been a while since I run photo periods, so it'd be a good chance for me to just um, close out the autos for a little bit, let them grow out and finish up, and then switch right into um, the photo periods. So I might just do one run of photo periods um, just because um, I kind of wish I had a more space to have a veg tent and stuff like that. So I haven't really gotten around to, um, having the space f for, you know, running photo periods. But I definitely would like to get back into growing them. Autos have been really fun for me. And we save a lot of nutrients. And if you do a good job, then... They do compare to a photo period, but you gotta really do a good job on um, the autos. You can't really slip up at all. They they're easy to stunt. They they can be really easy to screw up and not get your full potential out of them. Um, I'd say in the photo period area, you have a little bit more grace because you have this veg period where you can keep it in vegetative state. And you can play around with it and you know so there's it's a lot easier I would say with photo periods because you do have that barrier of the veg period where you can just keep it in you know 24 hours 24 hours of light and just keep it in the vegetative stage and just you know it's pretty easy so just saying there I mean many people say the autos are a good place to start but I think the photo periods are actually a better place to start because you got that that little buffer zone of it not just automatically going in the flower. So uh, for you new growers, I suggest sticking to photo periods for your first grow, and then maybe after a while switch switch to autos if you want to try autos. But I would say autos are a little bit more picky, so that's that's just my observation um, from growing a lot of strains. I, at this point right now, I don't know how many strains I've grown. I would have to like look back through all my videos to see, see, see how many I've grown. Um, but yeah, but the whole point is, I guess, is from growing a lot of different strains is I'm creating a list of very good strains that are going to produce and really the only way for me to find these strains is just to go through a lot of different strains and <laughs> kind of just put the good ones down kind of mark them down in, in my brain that you know I could always return back to this strain and it's legit that I'm not going to waste a lot of grow time on a bad bad strain but um, occasionally I, I don't do as well on some strains, but that just kind of goes with the norm of growing and growing different strains because each one's a little bit 
different. There's just like people, you know, everybody's a little different. So that's kind of how, how the strains go for me. And, but occasionally, like when I get along with a strain or a strain really loves my setup, take a look to your right. There's power plant. That's an exception of a plant that took off and loves, it loves its habitat. That's what it, that's why it's so huge. So, those are the strains to look for, and definitely being, you know, being, at least some mental notes are being taken, and, you know, I will return back to the strain one day, and, uh, Maybe in the next 10 years, I'll have a list so so long of good strains that, you know, it'll be nothing but good for me and I'd say for the rest of the grow community that you can benefit from me growing all these different strains and just see how I did. Especially if you're in water too, you know, if you're in water, you're growing in water, you can also... Um, Basically, these kind of plants are that grow in the water world. They're kind of subjected to, I would say, optimal optimal growth. And so, I'm not sure if these plants will do as well in soil, or you're going to get the same results. So I really can't say that. But definitely, if you're in the same situation of growing style that I am, then you have a good, very good chance of creating the exact same plants that I do. And that's something to keep in mind, um, especially for your soil growers, if you're watching. Um, I can't say that this is gonna turn out for you because it's completely different growing and there's a lot more going on. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Anyways, um, that is the end of my update today. And I hope you guys enjoyed the update. I'm, I have to get into water change right now, so I'm, I'm getting an early start right now. It's um, morning time here in Alaska, so I'm pretty much ready to go here. I got my nutrients mixed up, and I'm just going to get into it. it. takes a long time, especially with those big plants. They're just time-consuming as hell, so I'll get her done and then start to enjoy the rest of my Sunday. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourselves and happy growing.